One of the most amazing things that the creation of the state of Israel did was fulfill the prophecy, the ancient prophecy of the ingathering of the exiles, even communities barely anyone knew about. Shalom, my friends. This is the Kiva Gersh with Israel in Five, where we give you everything Israel in five minutes. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, or want to keep the conversation going, please do so below in the comments. When David Ben-Gurion stood up, in May 1948, and proclaimed the state of Israel. Together with that, he invited all the Jews in the world to come home after 2,000 years of exile to their ancestral homeland. He was eager, he was excited to open up the gates of immigration, which were closed during the British mandate, and allow the Jews to freely come into the land that was theirs, and that was their heritage. And it was an amazing thing over the next few years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, Jews literally from the four corners of the world came into the land of Israel, into the newly born state of Israel, flooded this place, first doubling the population here, then tripling the population here very, very quickly. And as a result, all different kinds of Jews from all different kinds of places, bringing all different kinds of languages and customs and foods and traditions came into the state of Israel, helping to form and create what the state of Israel would become. But within this story of the ingathering of the exiles, is this fact, this reality of these communities that were not known about, some of them unknown completely, disconnected from the Jewish people, disconnected from the Jewish story, and only in modern day times with the creation of the state of Israel did they reattach themselves, did they refine themselves connected to their global brothers and sisters. And it's been a fascinating story that is still actually unfolding. And you have all kinds of communities, big communities, small communities, communities that have fully kept on the Jewish tradition for thousands of years and others that have become detached, but have been connected in some Ways, some very interesting ways, in fact. Now, there are the classic bigger communities um, that we know about today, but weren't always known about through the 2000 years of exile. You know, the, the Jews from Ethiopia, right, who have returned in the tens of thousands over the past few decades. You have Jews from the East, you have Jews from India and other uh, parts of the world around there who have returned either individually or as families or as entire communities. I have um, family members who live on a moshav, which is a community here in Israel, which all Indian Jews, and you go into their synagogue, and yes, there's a lot of things that are similar between the, the way I pray and the way they pray, but there's so many things that are different, things that they develop in their almost seclusion for 2,000 years, if not more, from the rest of the global Jewish community. But in addition to that, and these are things that are being discovered all the time in their organizations who are working with these communities and their people who have dedicated their time to help them, to research them, to better understand them. There are communities dotting this world in Africa, in the East, who, while not technically Jewish, while not technically Jewish, they have retained all kinds of interesting Jewish customs and traditions for the past couple thousand years ago, which give historians and anthropologists and just people who are interested uh, in these people and helping these people, uh, great hints that they were back in the day, part of the, the tribes of Israel. And maybe they're part of the lost tribes of Israel, right? We know that 10 of the 12 tribes were exiled 2,700 years ago, and they were scattered around the then Assyrian empire. And from there, many of them probably moved to other parts of the world. So in recent decades, there are communities that have been found, discovered, who have certain eating styles that are very similar to the kosher eating style. They believe in one God. They do circumcision. Um, they have symbols and prayers and ideas and beliefs that are very similar to the Jewish people. And again, while not technically Jewish, they have retained these customs. And now in the modern day world, with the creation of the state of Israel and, and you know, people knowing about other people all around the world through modern day technology, many of these people want to return to their spiritual uh, roots. And there are organizations and there are people who are helping them uh, with, with, with prayer books and with all kinds of ritual objects and with education to help them come back to what they, their people, their communities, their tribes were connected to thousands of years ago. It's a really fascinating part of the modern state of Israel. It's a, it's a, it's a very fascinating part of the story 
of the modern state of Israel, not only the Jews who have already come back right, individually or as communities, but those who are still out there and are connected through history and through uh, the spiritual connection and through religious identity, who are still kind of figuring out where do, where do I, where do they play uh, in this whole story of the Jewish people and specifically the story of the Jewish people returning home. And this is really a, a, an incredible, amazing and fascinating part of this whole prophetic promise of the ingathering of the exiles and the Jewish people returning back to their land from the four corners of the earth after thousands of years of exile.